Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am sharing a new year clean with me marathon, but this video is going to be completely packed with all different kinds of things. So we're going to be undecorating, decluttering. I'm sharing several delicious and easy recipes. I'm also sharing my nighttime cleaning routine, which I've told you guys for years. This sets me up for success every single day and I do it almost every single night, but I've made a few adjustments to it that's made such a big difference. And also in this video is going to be several different house projects and like a little home refresh. So we are getting busy with all kinds of homemaking motivation. Now, if you have not clicked on one of these videos before, you're probably thinking, holy cow, this is a super long one. But the idea behind these marathon videos actually came from my husband several, several years ago. And basically it gives you the opportunity to pop this video up on your TV, tablet, or phone and clean right along with me or work on a project or declutter or just hang out and have some company. And the worst thing is when you're motivated to get things done, Done, and then a video turns off and you get distracted and you have to find a new video and you kind of start to lose that motivation. So this is going to fix that problem completely so you don't have to lose out on any motivation that you have. You can just keep on rolling. Now I am going to be giving away two $50 gift cards to two of my amazing subscribers. So all you have to do is make sure that you're subscribed and then leave a comment on this video, my previous video that I just shared, which is an Aldi haul, along with my next video that I'm going to share, which is going to be a pantry declutter and you guys do not want to miss out on that one and I will have all the information for that down below in the pinned comment and make sure your notifications are on because the way I'll get in contact with you is by replying back to your comment and letting you know that you won. So as always thank you so much for being here with me and without further ado let's get to it. Welcome to the new year. I cannot believe it's 2024. I feel like this year is going to be really incredible. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm right about it. After Christmas, before the new year, we're just kind of in limbo. I feel like that's kind of where I'm at right now. So I'm gonna take control of everything. We're actually gonna go ahead and start taking down all of our Christmas, give our home some room to breathe, and then of course clean everything up. We're gonna start out really nice and clean, really peaceful, really calm. I have some storage bins back there that I'm gonna go ahead and like sort everything out into when I take everything down. And I also want to declutter as I remove everything down, kind of go through everything. That's what I usually do when I start decorating as well as when I take it down. So we have a lot to get done. We're gonna work downstairs as well as upstairs. Let's do this. I wanna hear you say yeah. So this was pretty soon after Christmas and I feel like as you can see a lot of the Christmas mess and clutter and all the stuff was still kind of hanging out. I don't know how Christmas is with you guys but at our house it is very calm, very chill. A lot of times we don't have family in town. We prefer family in town like that's our favorite but when it's just us especially it's just so relaxed. But with a very relaxed Christmas, that means there's a lot of cleanup afterwards. So I'm definitely needing to tackle that here. So usually what we do is we just gather like a laundry basket for each of the boys and they can grab all their gifts and bring them up to their bedrooms. But then there's always some stragglers that kind of get left behind. And so I'm just making sure to stick those into laundry baskets and then the boys can bring those back upstairs to their rooms, get those put away and everything. And then any leftover wrapping paper, trash, whatever can get either recycled or thrown in the garbage can and then we can do like the actual tidying up and everything so that's kind of what I'm doing here but I would love to hear how was your Christmas this year did you guys have family in town did you go out of town a lot of times when the boys were young we used to go back to Montana and visit with family but 
as they've gotten a little bit older, we've just kind of learned that we love being at home for Christmas. We definitely invite family down to be with us during the holidays, but we just prefer to kind of hunker down and hang out and just have a nice relaxed holiday. All right, let me know what you do at your house. So you know, we decorate a little bit early. We decorate usually on like November 1st because I know myself and on the day after Christmas or the few following days, I just want peace in my home. I want to kind of take things down and get ready for the new year and start with a clean slate. Now, I wasn't feeling so overwhelmed this year like I feel like I normally am. I definitely was like, I'm ready for a clean slate. And as soon as I started pulling down the decor, I just felt a sense of relief. Like, ah, oh, this feels so good and makes me so excited for the new year and just all the things. So for us, I like to decorate a little bit early and then take it down pretty much right after Christmas. And then kind of get that fresh clean slate of the new year but I know a lot of people wait until the day after Thanksgiving to decorate and then a lot of people will wait a few days into January but let me know what works for you what do you do in your house and also I'm kind of curious do you do whatever you do because of a certain reason or do you do that because that's just how you did it growing up I think a lot of things we just end up doing because that's how we always did it growing up and you don't really even question it. And so I'm just curious like what you do and what your reasoning is for it. This duster that I'm using right here is my favorite. It's the Full Circle brand reusable duster. I don't know what the official name is for it, but I have had it for years and years and years. I got it from Grove Collaborative and you can just actually pull the entire duster part off. You can get refills for it and then toss those into the wash. So it's super nice. It works really well and I love that it's reusable. So it's lasted me literally for years and years. Now I am going to have to go back through and actually like wipe it down with a wet cloth probably my e-cloths I'm sure but for now I'm just getting the dust off I definitely like to do this between each season just because as you can see it definitely needs it it honestly needs it a little bit more but that's just not realistic for me to pull everything down and dust everything off like once a month so once a quarter is good for me but I'm thinking the next video I share which should be this coming Thursday that video I'm planning to share some like healthy recipes it's perfect for the new year because that's one of the things that I'm really excited about coming in the new year is just eating cleaner and eating healthier and just making clean eating more attainable so I'm definitely planning to share some new recipes with you guys but I'm also going to be decorating for just I guess our typical everyday decorations so not really seasonally but just the prettiest decor that I love all the time. So I'm thinking that I'm going to be adding that into the next video as well. I took the road, let's travel, travel. And my car broke down. So you'll see me go through and actually start decluttering some things a little bit later on But this year I actually didn't go crazy with my decor I didn't feel like I kind of kept it a little bit more simple on our shelving I just put what I wanted but nothing really kind of overtook the space And so honestly all the pieces that I ended up using this year are pieces that I loved and pieces that I think I'll continue to use year after year So I didn't end up decluttering anything at the moment But later on when I continue to pull things down from like around the kitchen and actually there was a lot of things in my other tote that isn't shown right here that I just didn't use this year and I don't think I'm going to use in coming years so I do end up decluttering some things later on. It does just feel really really good to have everything in my tote that I know I love.
Let me know if you remember when I drew on this little Christmas village onto this, um, what is it called? Like the brown parchment paper stuff. I don't know. I know you know what I'm talking about. I just can't think of what it's actually called. But anyway, I did this this year when I decorated for Christmas. I ended up covering our cactus picture just because it does not exactly scream Christmas and I wanted to be able to keep it up. I didn't want it to get damaged or anything by pulling it down but I also wanted it to feel Christmassy and so I loved that little picture how it turned out but it's kind of a bummer because I'm not going to be able to save it. I just know it's too big and it's not durable so I am going to end up tossing this out and recycling it so that was definitely a bummer but I'm thinking next year maybe I'll wrap it up with a bow or something or maybe I'll draw another kind of Christmas scene on there. It's a lot of fun just to know that now I have that option if I want to. One of my very big goals for this year is to really get great again at meal planning. That's something that I actually feel like I used to be so, so good at. Like every single night we had a meal on the table, it was healthy, and it was planned out because I did that every single Monday. I went meal shopping on Monday or grocery shopping on Monday. Like I was just in such a good routine and I'm not really sure exactly what happened. I think it was kind of a lot of things, but over the years, I have definitely fluctuated on being like really good at it, struggling a bit, and everything in between. So this year, I really want to work at that. I do feel like having this little menu board right here has been such a help to me. Just having something really easy like dry erase, and also on this board, I'm able to like write leftovers, and we kind of make sure that we use up our leftovers before they go bad. So that's been really helpful but that's definitely one of the things that I'm excited to work on in the new year and I'll touch more on that actually in the next video because I have some really great ideas that I'm wanting to try out and I'll share with you guys then. Okay, so I think it was my high energy clean with me video that I shared at the end of last year. In that video, I talked about thoughts on like New Year's goals, resolutions, all that kind of stuff. Now, I know some people totally swore off resolutions just because a lot of times it ends up being a letdown, but for me, I totally grab onto them and I just feel like even if you're going to fail a little bit at something or even if you might not reach it, to me, I feel like if you don't make goals, you're definitely not going to get better at something. So I personally love them. I love doing them, but I have learned over the years to set attainable goals. And then I do reach a little bit higher with those. I totally used to be the person that was like, you know, in the new year, I'm going to do this and do that and do this and do that and like list all of these crazy things. And it wouldn't just be like anything really attainable. It would be 
very, very intense. And so now I do kind of more focus on things that I actually can attain, but I do kind of set them a little bit more out of reach. That way I have something to really work towards. But one of the things that I chatted with you guys about was actually thinking of a good word for the new year. I really have loved doing that. I think the last two years, maybe three years, but anyway, over the last few weeks, I've been kind of thinking about what word I want to focus on for the new year. And I actually ended up landing on the word faith for the upcoming year. And to kind of go over that a little bit more of like what it means to me is basically I just used to be the person that had unlimited faith on anything. If something terrible would happen, I could always see the bright side of it. If I was going through something really difficult, I could always kind of look towards that silver lining. I could always kind of have blind faith, like it's fine. Everything's going to be good. And I would, you know, just move forward. And I feel like that served not only myself really well, but I actually feel like it was a beacon for my entire family. And ever since my dad passed almost two years ago now, it has definitely been a struggle for me. Like I don't, immediately just look towards the positive of something. If I'm struggling with something, I can dwell on it a lot longer and it's not served me in the same way at all. And so this year I am really going to be focusing on keeping faith with everything. Not, you know, just religious faith, of course, but also just faith in things being okay, like always looking towards the positive because I really think that is going to serve myself and my family so, so much better than me dwelling on any negative of anything. So that's my word officially for 2024. But if you have a word for this year and you didn't tell me last week, I would love to hear what your word is this year and what it means to you. I always think it's so inspiring. I'm actually having the kids pick a word this year. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun for them. Every year we do a hot cocoa bar for like winter and Christmas time. And this year I think I'm actually going to leave it up like another month or so. Now I am taking down all the Christmas decorations, but I'm just leaving the actual cocoa stuff themselves. And I won't really be like refilling anything, but the boys just love it. And since we are about to get into the coldest month of the year, which is January, I figured this is like the perfect time to leave it out. And I'm sure the boys will appreciate having a little extra time with it. Okay, so this basket or this bin is items that I actually didn't use this year. Now, I do like to kind of change things up each year, so I do like to have a little bit of a variety. Some of these I haven't even used probably in like two years. So I'm gonna go through them, declutter anything that I think I'm not going to want to use in future years, and then I'll stash this one away. And then all we really need to do left down here is just take the garland off from the top of the kitchen cabinets and then take the tree down and then we'll head upstairs. Everything in this laundry basket is everything that I'm going to be getting rid of and I'm sure I'm going to grab some more things from upstairs and you know when I go through that final tub. But as you may know, I started doing a decluttering series of basically my whole house a few months ago. I got a little jump start on it because I was feeling incredibly overwhelmed several months ago and one thing that I've learned is 
just because you like something doesn't mean it has a place in your home. And so all of these decor pieces that I'm actually getting rid of, I still like them, but I don't like them better than the ones that I'm keeping. Like those are the ones that I just don't have room for on my shelves. And so for that reason, I'm going to give them a new home. I'm going to give them to my sisters or give them to a friend or donate them and just let them kind of have a new life and feel appreciated because for like two years now, these things have just sat in my totes doing nobody any favors. So it just feels so good to declutter things, even if they are things that I'm still liking, but I just don't love. And I'm really excited because next week I'm going to be jumping back into my decluttering series and continuing on throughout the house and just clearing out more spaces and feeling even more peace than we we're already feeling. I still have so far to go with this, but it feels so good to be just clearing things out and only keeping things in our home that actually serve us. I feel like I've just felt such a huge weight lifted whenever I go through any areas in our house. This year was kind of funny to me because we ended up decorating a little bit early because we were having company come into town and then it got just so chaotic I think because we had company and then we were kind of playing catch up and then we went out of town and it was just a slew of you know life stuff and we ended up not decorating our Christmas tree until probably like two weeks before Christmas. We did have it up for all that time and we did have lights on it and stuff, but we didn't have the actual ornaments on it or like the garland strung around it or anything until like two weeks before Christmas. And then now we're like already taking it down, but I feel like everyone's kind of ready for, you know, that fresh feeling and just having a little bit more space in the house and all that stuff. So I don't feel like we got to enjoy it for as long as we would have liked to, but now at this point, we're just kind of ready to move forward. But this year, I feel like I have a new appreciation for pre-lit trees because we got our tree several years ago and it's a pre-lit tree, but it actually had the lights start going out like two or three years ago and then they went out a little bit more the next year and this year they're like basically completely gone and so we had to string the lights around it ourselves, which totally worked like you can't even tell the difference and we were able to get some lights that I really like they have some color options they also are just like a warm light or a cool light whatever you want so it's really cool like how versatile it is but stringing the lights on was just like a whole nother step. And so I'm definitely feeling like very grateful for the pre-lit trees. I don't think we're going to end up getting a new tree just because this one totally works other than the lights and we're able to remedy that with the, you know, extra lights. But if they ever sold a tree that had like guaranteed lights that wouldn't go out for like 10 or 15 years, I would sign up for that tree so quick because I just am a girl that loves the simplicity of things. While Kyle was still working on unwrapping all the lights from the Christmas tree, I just went ahead and started vacuuming up our carpet. It definitely needed a little extra love, especially with like all of the glitter being pulled down from all the Christmas decor and Christmas actually happening and all this stuff. So I just wanted to give the carpets a good clean. Now I actually have a brand new tool that I want to share with you guys. I was actually going to share it with you guys in this video, but I ended up just running out of time. We had to make a quick trip to the pet store because Liam got a lizard for Christmas. I'm not sure if we'll regret that decision, but he's getting a bearded dragon, but I'm excited to share that other tool with you guys. So I'm thinking I'll probably do that in next video, but it's like a new vac mop that is a lot more affordable than the one that I have. I absolutely love my Roborock back mop, but it definitely is on the pricier side. So I have really high hopes for this new one to see if it's going to work as well, but also be at a lower price point. So we'll see and I'll share with you guys in the next video.
It is actually the next night. We had a really busy day and we had a busy night, so I'm just kind of getting back to things, but I want to tackle these stairs. I'll show you guys an up close, but one of the things about that garland, I got it years and years ago from Hobby Lobby and it's so pretty, but it sheds like crazy. Not the actual leaves itself, but it's like, I'll just, I'll show you guys an up close, but it's like these little tiny bits of ice kind of like crystals i guess which is supposed to look like frost it looks so pretty but it sheds like no other so i'm gonna go ahead and kind of clean up the stairs on my way upstairs we'll take down the rest of christmas and get that looking really nice and then our house will just be done it'll be so nice and clean and it's already just feeling so much more peaceful down in like the main living area it feels really really good So this is my new vacuum. I believe it's still on sale, but I'll leave the link down below either way. But what's really cool is it is a full size vacuum. It's corded, so you have all that suction and power, but all you do is press this button and it's like a lift away. And then this is so incredibly light. So this way I can just like vacuum the stairs easily. I can set the canister down and do it, but then I can just go up and down the stairs way easier than if I were lugging like a whole big vacuum. This is so random, but when Kyle and I were taking down the Christmas tree, we were taking off the Christmas cactus lights, we were just chatting with each other about like New Year's resolutions and kind of what we were hoping for the new year. And one of the topics that we got on was actually whether or not we were procrastinators. And I was asking him if he felt like he was a procrastinator and he was like, uh, like maybe kind of, but not any more than anybody else. And then he said that he thought I was definitely not a procrastinator. And I literally stopped what I was doing and looked at him and I was like, what, are you serious? Because to me, like that's one of my biggest faults is I feel like I am such a procrastinator. And he kind of was explaining to me that from his point of view at least, he just feels like I have kind of an imbalance in my mind. Like when I'm working on something, I kind of can't turn my mind off to something else. Almost like I'm always multitasking in my mind and I completely agree. And so he said, when I do that, then it ends up costing me more with something else, if that makes sense. Like, for example, if I'm working on a project, I will be thinking about that project 24 seven for like weeks. And I feel like I've been working on that project for weeks, even though I haven't even started on it, right? Like I'm just doing all the planning of it. And so then I end up getting burnt out from it. And when I could be, you know, actually working on the project, then I'm like, pushing it off, pushing it off, because to me, it's like I've been working on it this whole time. And so that's definitely true, I would say, from what he was saying. I do think I still need to work a little bit on procrastinating, but I think a big part of it is kind of what he was talking about. So I was curious if any of you have struggled with that, like kind of not being able to shut your mind off from different things that you're not actually working on at the moment, 
but just kind of things that are taking up mental capacity. If you have struggled with that, do you have any tips or any, you know, exercises that you found that work for that? Because that is definitely something that I really, really want to work on. I think that's not serving me well at all. And I really just kind of want to fix that or change it in the new year. So I know that is so incredibly random, but any advice you have on that, I would be all ears. now we have an almost 13 year old a 10 year old and a seven and a half year old and I can just feel the magic of Christmas is kind of slipping through my fingers like I can tell we only have a few years left of that really really magical Christmas with really young kids and it's fun to go into this new stage but it also kind of breaks my heart just because I feel like I didn't know how fast time would go and I know everybody always tells you that and I remember growing up you know you see your relatives that you don't see all the time and they're like how in the world did you grow so much as a kid you're like I don't know I've just been growing normal you know but when you're an adult and especially when you're a parent you just see your kids just shoot up so quickly and like the years go by faster and faster and I just was talking to Kyle I was like I just want time to slow down like it was such a good year but it was such a fast year I cannot even begin to believe that the year is over it's so unbelievable to me Next up is our theater room. You know this room always gives me a bit of trouble, but it's okay because this is where we love to hang out and we just kind of veg out in here, chill, and then there comes a point where we just got to get it together. So that's what I'm doing in here now. And one thing about it is like when you have a room that gets too far gone too often, that feels so good once it's all put together again. It just feels like a breath of fresh air and you kind of appreciate it a little bit more. So that's definitely how I felt when I was cleaning this room. But even though I definitely was not feeling like cleaning up at this point, I just wanted to hang out and chill. I really did not want to go into the new year with a room like this. So I wanted to get our whole house cleaned up, fresh and just feeling really nice and peaceful and that's exactly what I did and exactly how it felt once I was done because she wasting the time and she got things to do uh, like work on herself because that's what queens do she ain't like other women and that's the truth plus she knows so worth and all her value if you ain't talking to rain she throwing up the deuce she throwing up the deuce that girl way too saucy I'm just glad I made her mine she's a saucy
here I'm just grabbing all the rest of our Christmas stuff and putting it into our upstairs Christmas bin. This is more of like my red and white. Sometimes I have gold tossed into here, but I do love just keeping things separated in the areas that I like to use the decorations in. And although this definitely felt like a big task to take all the Christmas decorations down all in one basically 24 hour period, it did feel so good to get the house feeling like I could breathe again and just feel like we're starting the new year out with a clean slate and just ready to make it exactly what we're wanting. Now, let me know in the comments, did you clean along with me today or are you just like banking some motivation for later? There's definitely no wrong answer. I'm just curious what you did today. If you did take advantage of cleaning along with a friend, let me know what you got done today during this like 30 minute video. And I also did wanna remind you, make sure to stay tuned for Thursday's video. That's gonna be the next video that I share and it's going to be a homemaking video. We are going to be putting decorations back up on the shelf. I'm going to be sharing some new recipes, lots of homemaking motivation and cleaning inspiration. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm also going to be testing out that new vac mop. So I'm really excited to try it out with you guys and just kind of let you know my thoughts on it. So stay tuned for all of that. I'm so excited for all the things to come in the new year. If you have any video suggestions or things that you would like me to share, go ahead and let me know in the comments and you never know, I might just pick that for my next video. But as always, thank you so incredibly much for spending your time with me today. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Today we are getting things done. It's a new year. We have a lot going for us. I am actually just slicing up some grapefruit right now. How good does that look? And it's just gonna go into my water bottle that I got actually for Christmas. Not like I really needed another water bottle, but this one is pretty big. It's like 64 ounces, so it's nice. You can see what's in there. It just looks really appetizing. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that up with a little bit of grapefruit. I might toss in a few frozen strawberries. I'm actually gonna start getting some crock pot freezer meals made. I'll talk about that in a minute, but that's one of my goals this year. And at least like in the beginning of the year, I really want to focus on some freezer meals, crock pot freezer meals specifically, just to kind of get a hold of dinner time and everything. Then I also want to decorate our living room shelves since I took everything down from the holidays. Then I also want to clean everything up. I cleaned a little last night, but I didn't get everything done. So I still have a little bit more to do today. And then I'm also wanting to do a little bit of food prep, including a new way that I learned to juice. I haven't actually done this yet. So I'm testing it out with you guys today for the first time, but fingers crossed that it works really well because if it does, it's going to make juicing so much more attainable, so much easier. And I just have really high hopes for it. So we'll be doing all of that today. Maybe some other stuff. We'll just kind of see how the day goes. But I'm gonna fill my water and we'll get started. So this water bottle is cool. It's like I said, pretty large at 64 ounces, but you have like a sipper top right here. And then you also can just flip this up and sip it like a straw. So I love that. And it has a closable lid so you can take it on the go with you. All right, so we are going to begin this video with some freezer meals. Like I said, those I think are going to be my ticket to getting really good at getting meals on the table every night at dinner. I feel like I've just been a little hit or miss on that. I kind of chatted about that in my last video, but 
Before we can do that, I need to clear a space. So I'm just kind of putting away some of the groceries that I had just ordered on a Walmart delivery order. And then we'll go ahead and get into the actual crock pot freezer meals. But let's go ahead and do some highs and lows. We did that a few videos back and I loved hearing your highs and lows for the week. So I will go ahead and start. So a high for me this week was I actually started doing pickleball. Kyle has been playing pickleball for a couple of years now and he absolutely loves it. It, but I just recently started going with him and we've actually been going in the mornings which has been perfect because the kids were out of school and it was just kind of relaxed but we would wake up at like 5 30 in the morning and go play pickleball for a couple hours and then we came home and actually kind of started our day but it's been really great for me because I really struggle with waking up early and when people are actually relying on me I can show up so that has been a really fun high for me and let's see i think for my low this week i would have to say i have struggled a bit more with insomnia it's something that kind of comes and goes but i don't know what it's been i feel like i've just been struggling a little bit with sleeping so i'm hoping that that will kind of fix itself next week or maybe i'll just have to work on doing better with my nighttime routine maybe do some meditation something like that but insomnia has definitely been a little bit of a struggle lately we are lost in our own specific state It's the logic of things that I never could explain Feel the blanks in our body she eats Alright, so I have all of my ingredients laid out for each recipe So we're going to be making a green chili pork stew How good does that sound? Also a chicken tikka masala And a teriyaki chicken These two are going to be freezer meals but this one, the pork stew, I'm actually gonna make for tonight, but I'm going to see if I can double the recipe and also make a freezer meal for later in the week or next week or whatever. Now I do, <laughs> as I was going through my pantry last night in my fridge to make sure I had all the ingredients for everything, I didn't even think to look if I had better than bouillon for like chicken stock, broth, all that stuff, because I always have it. I always have it in the fridge. I feel like I always have it in the pantry extra. And as I'm like gathering everything today, I'm like, wow, I don't have it. So we are going to do <laughs> the pork stew last because once I get these two done, I need to run to the store and grab some of that. So we're gonna do the tikka masala and the teriyaki chicken first, and then we'll go to the pork stew, but let's go ahead and get it going. And FYI, anything that I share, typically I will have saved on my Amazon favorites list, always linked down below or on my like to know it. But if you have questions about anything that I'm using or whatever, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. All right, so for the tikka masala, you're going to need some chicken breast. Also garlic, I'm just using the convenient minced garlic. You'll need a jalapeno, some paprika, some cumin, garam masala, tomato sauce, and tomato paste, as well as salt and pepper, and either some heavy cream or to make it dairy-free, I'm just using coconut milk, so you can do either. And then you'll also want some cilantro. Now for the teriyaki chicken, you're going to need some chicken breast or chicken tenderloins, garlic, again, I'm just using the minced garlic. You'll also need either some honey or some sugar, ground ginger, as well as crushed red pepper flake, some cornstarch, rice vinegar, and soy sauce, or this is just coconut aminos, which is basically the same thing, and then salt and pepper. Okay, so both of these are definitely dump and go crock pot recipes, and I feel like most crock pot recipes can actually be freezer meals. There are occasionally ones where you kind of can't do that, but I would say 95% of them are definitely freezer meal friendly. So I'm just getting my freezer bags all set up on those little clips. And then I'm just dividing up my chicken between the two bags. And I'm going to start out with the chicken tikka masala. This is one of my favorite meals. If you have not ever had tikka masala, it's actually such a delicious meal. It has a ton of spice, but I really don't feel like there's a lot of heat to it. However, in this recipe, you can kind of adjust that because when you put in your jalapeno, you can either use a seed or not use a seed. So like I said, I am just starting out with the chicken breast. Then I'm going to be adding in a lot of minced garlic. I don't really measure a lot of things. I feel like I try to measure a lot more things when I'm sharing recipes with you guys. But when I'm cooking in my kitchen by myself, I pretty much don't pull out any measuring things. I just kind of measure whatever looks and feels right. But next I'm gonna go ahead and add in a jalapeno. 
This one did not look really spicy, so I'm just leaving the seeds in, but if you really wanna limit the spice, you can go ahead and take those seeds out. And then next I'm going to be adding in all the spices. So we're going to add in the paprika, the cumin, the garam masala, and then we're going to add in some tomato sauce as well as tomato paste. And technically this recipe says to wait to add the cilantro until the end, like once it's all done cooking. But because I don't always have cilantro on hand, I want to make sure that I have it in my freezer meal. So so I'm just going to go ahead and add it in right now. However, I do always have coconut milk on hand and that's something that you'll add in once you actually go ahead and cook it in the crock pot. And as always, I do include recipe cards in my videos for every recipe that I share. And usually I also share the recipes on my website, which is thiscrazylifevlog.com. And so I will have the blog post linked down below for that. Now for the chicken teriyaki. This one honestly could not be easier. This is like a full-on dump and go recipe. So again, I'm just starting out with my chicken in my Ziploc bag. Then you're going to add in your cornstarch. This is just going to thicken the teriyaki sauce. Next, I'm going to add in some honey. The original recipe actually calls for sugar, but I wanted to just use some honey because I feel like it's a little better for you, but either way totally works. Next, you're just going to add in some ground ginger along with some crushed red pepper. Next, I'm just adding in some rice vinegar along with coconut aminos which is basically the same thing as soy sauce and of course i've got to add in a ton of garlic let me know if you're a fan of garlic i feel like that's one of those things that yes it is very popular but i also feel like if you don't like it you really really don't like it and our family absolutely loves it they've kind of just grown to like it because i am such a fan and i always measure garlic by the spoonful <music> For the green chili pork stew, you are going to need a boneless pork loin, some garlic, russet potatoes, an onion, carrots, tomatoes, green chilies, oregano, cumin, cayenne pepper, bay leaves, salt, pepper, and some chicken stock. I'm just using better than bouillon. All right, finally for the green chili pork stew, this is what we were having on this night and I also wanted to double the recipe so that I could also have a freezer meal. So I went ahead and pulled out my crock pot and also got my Ziploc bag set up for a freezer meal. And then I'm just going to start prepping out all of my produce and the meat. So you're gonna start by peeling your russet potatoes and cut them up into one inch cubes. Then you're gonna do the same thing with your carrots. I don't peel these just because I buy them organic, so I wash them really good and then call it a day. Also go ahead and chop up your tomato and your onion, and then you can just add all of that into your slow cooker or your freezer bag, whatever you're making. Then once I have all my produce chopped up, I'm just gonna grab my pork loin. This is amazing because I'm able to get two full meals out of this and the pork loin itself cost under $10 and it's a lot of meat. So this is definitely a pretty budget friendly meal and it's also very filling. But all you wanna do is go ahead and trim any fat off the pork loin and then chop it again into about one inch cubes. Then I'm going to add it directly into the slow cooker and freezer bag along with some minced garlic. And then we're just gonna go ahead and add in all of our spices. So I'm adding in some dried oregano, some cumin, some cayenne pepper, and a couple bay leaves along with salt and pepper. And then I'm finishing it off with four cups of chicken stock. I'm just using the Better Than Boyan. It's what I've used for years and I love it just because it's so affordable. And also it takes up a lot less space than a bunch of jars of stock because it's just really condensed stock in this little jar that you can add water to and then you're good to go. Now this recipe also calls for one can of green chilies, but you don't wanna add that in right now. Instead, you wanna add that in right when it's finished cooking. That way the flavor is still really fresh and it's not gonna be kind of cooked out of the meal. Then once you have everything added into your bag, you just wanna make sure to get out as much air as possible. And one little tip, whenever you're making freezer meals, you want to make sure to lay them flat and freeze them flat. That way they take up a lot less space. They're able to be organized in your freezer. And it's just one of those random tips that makes a big difference.
Now, anytime you do freezer meals, you definitely wanna make sure to write down what they are right onto the bag or onto a label or something that you can stick onto the bag. You wanna write down what exactly the meal is. Also, you wanna put the date of the day that you made it up. And then I just like to add any cooking details. So I add how long I cook it for. I add what side dishes I want to go with it. For example, the tikka masala and the teriyaki chicken will probably end up going along with rice and veggies. And then the final thing that I want to make a note of is if I need to add anything to the end of the slow cooking process. So for example, that stew needs one can of green chilies and then that tikka masala is going to need the coconut milk. So those are just the details that you wanna make sure you write down on the freezer meal. And then the only thing left to do is pop them in your freezer. You can go ahead and defrost them the night before in the fridge and then pop them in your slow cooker the next day. Or if you forget and you don't have time to defrost them, it's no big deal. All you want to do is just maybe add like an extra hour or so to the cooking time and you can add it straight from your freezer right into your crock pot. If you see me talking here, I swear I'm not talking to myself. My mom had actually called me, so I was just getting some things done while I chatted with her on the phone. I personally love being on the phone and visiting with someone while I'm cleaning or prepping food or whatever, just to kind of keep my mind busy and it just makes the time go by a lot faster. Or if I don't have anyone to talk to on the phone or on Marco Polo or something, I also love listening to audiobooks or listening to a podcast. I would typically will go for like the self-help or the motivation podcasts and audiobooks and things like that. I don't typically listen to just like entertainment only like novels or things like that, but I do just love that you're able to kind of maximize your time. Like I don't just take time to sit down and listen to an audiobook often or, you know, listen to a podcast or something. But when I'm just working on some household chores that I have to do every day, it's fun to kind of mix things up and feel like I'm actually getting a lot of benefit and feel like I'm also kind of getting Getting other things done while I'm being productive. Let me know in the comments what you do when you clean and kind of work on all the homemaking stuff. Do you like to listen to audiobooks, podcasts, music, talk on the phone with a friend or a loved one, or do you not really do any of those things and just work on your chores? I met you in the sun, saw my plans come undone, cause I knew you were the one. So we from Paris on one knee With a letter and a ring Got married in the spring 
And the day I met you, I think I met myself. I feel like whenever I start looking very closely at things, you can definitely notice there is a lot to be done around the house. But these cabinet messes that I'm showing you are something that you can so quickly and easily look past because you see them every day and they just kind of slowly get worse. It's not right in front of your eyes. But really, when you take a second and just check things out like this, whether it's a door or a wall or your cabinets, you can see how badly they need to be wiped down. And it's one of those things that doesn't seem like it would make a big difference, but it actually does make a pretty big impact. I notice that a lot when I wipe down light switches and door handles and you know, even doors themselves, and also kitchen and bathroom cabinets. It makes a big difference. But walk around your house for 10 minutes and pay attention to trim and doorknobs and light switches and cabinets and things like that. Take a second to wipe down those surface areas and it will be amazing to see how much cleaner your house looks. And it's really not a hard chore. It's just one of those things we often forget or don't really make time for. But in the end, it really isn't a very time consuming thing. All it takes is just remembering to do it and then making it happen. Just be with you tonight Yeah, yeah, yeah Be with you tonight Yeah, yeah, yeah Be with you tonight You I'll never fully know How deep your heart can go Or the beauty of your soul Oh, you Where were you all the long? Every other one was wrong And I found where I belong Oh, the day I met you, I think I met myself I don't ever want to be with anyone else We got the kind of story that the stories would tell Different than I've ever felt And I know we've got our whole lives No indignance inside Darling, all I wanna do is be with you and I know we've got our whole lives, no indignance inside. Darling, all I wanna do is be with you tonight. Now that we're into the new year, I'm definitely getting the itch to make things over, do some projects around the house. While I was working on this day, I kept feeling like a majority of the year, you kind of just get to work on things in your life. Like you get the opportunity to perfect your life if you take that opportunity, obviously. And then around the fall time is when things get so busy and so chaotic. And I think the season and the holidays, although they are so fun, they just kind of take over everything and all the extra stuff really kind of goes out the window or at least that's how it works for me. So the past few months, I have just been keeping up with the season, making things magical for my kids and the holidays and all this stuff. And now I'm just feeling really excited to make a focus on the things that I actually want to focus on. And some of those things are definitely my home. Like we have different rooms in our house. I have some furniture pieces that I want to fix and I'll be sharing that all with you guys, but I'm really, really excited for all that. And I know that probably seems random, but it just reminded me because our coffee table that I was just wiping down, I'm sure you noticed has a lot of scratches and scrapes just because it's a veneer and it's a dark wood. So it shows any imperfection. And that's been something that's kind of been on my list of a piece that I kind of want to refinish. I'm not sure exactly what I want to do with it, but my mind is always thinking whenever I look at it, I'm like, what could I make with you? Like, how could I kind of change you up and make it look just a little bit better, a little bit more polished in this living room?
Okay, so this right here is the Shark Hydrovac and it is the cordless option. And as you may know, I do already have a vac mop, but this was on such a great deal that I have been curious to try a different brand and just kind of see how it compares. I absolutely adore my Roborock vac mop and I honestly cannot recommend it to you guys enough. However, it is sold at a higher price point than the Shark one and it also doesn't go on sale as much as the Shark one. I've just seen it go on sale a lot more and for a greater discount. So I figured I would take advantage of this sale recently and I wanted to test it out and I'll be able to tell you guys which one I prefer or if the Shark option is worth it since it's at a better price point. Planning to go ahead and work on my floors However, I didn't even think about I'm going to have to charge this since it's a cordless option So i'm not gonna be able to work on the floors right now I'll just set it up and charge it and then a little bit later on in the video I'll actually go through my floors and test it out and i'll be able to share my full review on it The way we're going to make our juice is going to be with a blender. I do feel like you probably need to have a high-speed blender, but I also think there's so many good, more affordable high-speed blenders on the market now. We've had our Vitamix for like eight years or something. We've had it a really, really long time. I did end up getting like just like a shorter actual blender bottle a few years back, but this machine has survived a lot for like eight years, almost a decade. So anyway, what we're gonna do is you basically just add all of your stuff into your blender. You do need to add in a little water. It's what I've read, like maybe a cup, maybe two cups kind of see where you need. And then you are just going to strain out your juice. I have read that they recommend using a nut milk bag, which I do have because they used to always make our own like oat milk, rice milk, things like that. But I also am going to first try out using my fine mesh strainer and see how that does because I think that would be a lot easier. But we'll kind of play around with it and I'll let you guys know any tips as we go but we are going to make two different juices today i'm going to make one that's like a super yummy green juice and then we're also going to make an immunity juice that's going to have like carrots oranges i believe ginger and lemon so it's kind of like two different style juices but they're both super flavorful super yummy and i'm really excited to see how this works compared to a traditional juicer i love our juicer so much but you have to wash all the little pieces and it's just kind of like one of those tedious things that is easy to push off and not do. So we'll see how this goes. All right, for the green juice, we have spinach, kale, celery, cucumbers, some ginger. I know it sounds weird if you haven't put this in your juice, but it is so good. Lemon and green apples. And then of course we'll add a little water into that. All right, and then for the immunity juice, we are going to have carrots, oranges, lemon, ginger again, and then water as well. So those are our two juices that we're gonna go ahead and make up.
So I'm starting out with this really tight weave mesh sieve. I think that's what it's called, but this is going to hopefully get a lot of the fiber and a lot of the texture out of the juice. And then I'll go in, if needed, I'll go in with my nut milk bag and be able to get out the rest. This is my nut milk bag and I just tasted a little with a spoon and it, I think it definitely is going to need to go into here. But what I'm gonna do to make this easy is actually I'm just gonna use a mason jar and I'm gonna stick this through here and see how this works. Yeah. So to give you some feedback on this whole blender juicing thing, I would say I'm overall a fan of it. I don't think that it worked quite as well for the carrot juice, and I think it's just because the carrots are very pulpy, if that's even a word. But the carrot juice was definitely a lot thicker and just a lot harder to get through the mesh sieve. But the benefit to doing this is I do feel like you get a lot more juice with a lot less produce, which is awesome. I do know that you're adding in water, so clearly you're going to be getting a little bit less nutrients. However, it is nice to not have to use like five apples to get a few cups of juice. Like for example, on that green juice, I used one apple, a few pieces of celery. I used a lot of kale and some spinach. Like that's a lot of juice for just that little bit of stuff. And there really wasn't a whole lot of waste. I feel like with a typical juicer, there is a lot more pulp. So I have to say I'm definitely a fan of this way, but I think it's just going to be one of those things that really depends on what kind of juice you're making. Because like I said, the orange one with all the carrots just was a little bit more difficult to squeeze through the nut milk bag but i also would say if you don't have a juicer and you do have a good blender then for sure this worked totally great the juices tasted incredible and i could really not even tell a difference between a juice that i made in my juicer versus this blender juice i'm holding my breath day has moved faster than me so it is very dark outside and it's actually about time for dinner but I want to get one more thing done before I wrap the day up and then I think tomorrow I'll actually go through and clean up the floors with my new vacuum mop. I'll share with you guys what I think of that and then I'll also decorate the shelves tomorrow so anyway we're gonna quickly make some overnight oats I have made these so many times they are such a staple super quick and easy to prep they're super quick and easy to grab on the go or you know, just have like a quick breakfast at home or even a snack and you can customize them. So I'm gonna show you a different customization today. So for these overnight oats, of course, you just need some kind of bowl. They don't have to be anything fancy. These are just some Pyrex storage dishes that I have and I believe they're in like the two cup size. And then you're just going to need some rolled oats, some almond milk or whatever milk you like. And then if you want, you can add in things like chia seeds, flax seeds, whatever add-ins you want, just sprinkle those on in. And then and for the flavors and topping on this one, you're just going to need some peanut butter or other nut butter that you like, along with some bananas. 
but really you can get so creative with these. These are so awesome because you literally just mix them up like this and then you stick them in the fridge and just use them within like three to five days and you'll be good to go. Now, personally, I would just recommend chopping up your banana the morning of whenever you're about to use this. But if you want, you can go ahead and do it now. It may just get a little bit brown and soggy in your oat bowl, but it really won't taste a whole lot different whether you add it in now or later. Then once you have everything added in and mixed up, you're going to just pop the lids back on, stick it in the fridge and grab it whenever you're ready to enjoy. Once our stew was all done cooking, I just went ahead and added in that can of green chilies once I got done fighting with the can itself. But all you need to do is literally just dump it in and stir it and mix it up. You're also going to try your best to fish out those bay leaves and then you serve it just as is. You can always add in salt and pepper if needed, but this is such an incredibly delicious stew. I feel like it has really unique flavors because whenever you think stew or at least whenever we think of stew, we think of beef stew with tomato and potato and carrots and celery and all that stuff. But this is definitely a little bit more of like a Southwest feel and it's right up my alley, like my favorite kind of flavors. If you love those kind of flavors too, this is gonna be one that you'll love as well. Alrighty, we are going to decorate the shelves, but as promised, we are first going to test out the new Shark Vac Mop. I don't know if it's new actually, but it's new to me. So let's go ahead and turn it on. I did not do my floors. I didn't even turn this on so that we can test it out together. Okay, so I definitely had a lot of thoughts on this and I'll kind of give you my official thought right at the end of this little cleaning session. But one thing that I really liked and I noticed immediately was that it was so lightweight. Like this is a lot lighter weight and easier to maneuver than my Roborock, which is definitely a plus. I also would say that it did clean very well and something that I'm not really sure if it's like a massive pro or not, but overall I would put it in like the pro Pro category is that it actually had a rug cleaning option that was that little button that I first pressed right when I was turning it on I just pressed it to check it out and see what it was about I don't fully know like what it means exactly so I'm not entirely sure on that but it is cool that you are able to go over your rugs I thought that was a really neat option now for the cons I would say that it maybe has a little bit smaller clean water tank which just means that you're not gonna be able to clean as long without refilling that. I also feel like it has a little bit of a shorter battery life, which is just going to, again, kind of shorten your clean time. Now, if you did get the corded option, that's not gonna be a problem. And I would say for what I clean typically, this isn't gonna be a problem for me either, but just, you know, some notes. Now, for me, I would say the biggest downfalls to this and something that I didn't fully realize, I knew that my Roborock did self-cleaning and I knew that was a big deal. Like, I thought that was awesome. But I kind of thought that was a universal thing. Like a lot of these vac mops actually do that, but it turns out that's not the case. So this shark, it's not as streamlined whenever you have to clean it out, which that part is normal. Like even with the Roborock, you still have to clean out your machine. Like you have to empty it, you have to rinse it out, otherwise it will get yucky. However, I never have to touch the roller on my Roborock because it has that self-clean option. Whereas on the Shark Hydrovac, you do have to pull that out and clean that out yourself, which isn't the biggest deal but I've been spoiled with a Roborock, so I'm definitely a fan of that self-clean option, and I just found myself missing it. Now, overall, my thoughts on this are the Roborock is definitely at a higher price point. I don't see it go on sale near as often or near as discounted, but I would say if you have the budget to go for the Roborock, I would suggest that one, but if you don't have the budget, I do think the Shark is an incredible option. I'm only being like very picky on it just because I'm really trying to compare the two, but I really don't think you can go wrong with either. I think they're both going 
to make mopping a lot easier, a lot more convenient. And even though you do have to clean it out each time, just like a mop and bucket, you know, it's just a little extra step. It still just saves so much time because in the end, you're not having to vacuum your floors and then go through and mop them as well. But I will have the link for both machines down below so you can check them out. Finally, it's time to decorate the shelves and I am not getting anything new. I'm just pulling from the decor that I have in our guest bedroom, which is where we keep it. We just got some Ikea cabinets. We shared that several years ago, we put those in and it's just been really great to be able to store my decor and just have a specific place to put it. For the shelves today, I'm not doing any kind of theme. I'm not doing, you know, spring or summer or anything. I'm just doing everyday decor. And sometimes I think it's really fun to do that. Nothing really fancy, just putting up what you really love. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. So whenever I go to decorate, I will follow a few rules. Like you can use the rule of three. You definitely want to play with texture, color, size difference, things like that, just to create a lot of interest as you're decorating. But a lot of decorating is just going to be putting something up there, seeing what you think, standing back, changing it up, and just keep on going with that until you like what you see. And you'll definitely get there. So stick to it. I feel like a lot of times it's easy to get overwhelmed or it's easy to kind of feel like you just can't figure it out. But if you do keep on trying new things, you'll definitely get it looking exactly how you want. lights up there that's how it's supposed to look it lights it up so pretty and over here this one's actually been out for a few months but we were waiting on the light to arrive and then that one went out just like a week ago and kyle like the lights finally arrived but they're the wrong size so he's actually gonna have to like router this out to add them in and then we will have matching lights which will be awesome because it actually makes quite a bit of difference in just like how dark or lightly the shelves look. These olive stems, I think 
think I got them on Amazon years and years and years ago, and they have been one of my most versatile pieces. I have used them in all different seasons and all different areas, and they just always are one that I'm definitely going to be continuing to keep and use for years to come. But once I got the coffee table all decorated, I just used my DIY room spray, which is just water and a lot of drops of essential oil, whatever scent you're wanting. And I'm just spritzing that around the room just to make sure it's smelling really nice and fresh. Okay, this I've been so excited about. I have had my eye on this vase for probably about five months now, and every time I go to look for it, it's sold out. So at the moment, it's not sold out. I will link it below. But this is from Walmart, you guys. It looks so incredible. It's really, really good size, and I know that this one is going to be one of my staple pieces that I'll have, again, for years to come. But I'm just doing a little tray styling on our table. I'm adding in some candlesticks, also this beautiful low-profile candle. This is the same one that I use for Christmas but it looks so so pretty and then I'm just adding in some floral stems into that beautiful vase and voila the table is all done guys we are all finished we got a lot done today stay tuned for monday i am going around the house and decluttering and i'm decluttering a lot and i'm decluttering a lot of different areas so you definitely do not want to miss out on that motivation i hope you enjoyed today's video i hope you feel like you got a lot out of it thank you so much for spending your time with me it really means so so much more than you know i hope you have an incredible rest of your day and i will see you in the next one Bye, guys. Hey you guys, so today we are working on refreshing things around the house, starting with our guest bedroom. So I have two big things that I want to do in here. One, we got a new mattress finally because this mattress has been in our family, I don't know, like 15 plus years and it feels like it. I think it's been honestly maybe like 20 years, but it's been around a while and the one that we got i am so beyond excited for i'm sure i'll be sleeping a few nights in here with it but we want to change out the mattress and then also i want to add a little more function into this room right now we just have this old stool right here that i thought would be really nice because people could set their luggage on but i've asked our guests when they come to stay they're like you know what a dresser would be a lot more useful originally that was actually in the plans but the one that i got was a little bit too wide. So I just found one on Facebook Marketplace literally yesterday, but I have to give it a little bit of TLC. So we're gonna do that today and add that into here. And then I'm actually gonna hop outside and just kind of refresh the backyard a little bit because that definitely needs a little love. So we have a lot to get done. I honestly doubt we're gonna get it all done today. It'll probably be like a two day thing, but it's gonna feel so much better once it's done. So let's do this. This is the before of this room and we're not going to be changing a ton about the styling of the room but we're going to be adding a lot of functionality and just kind of make it feel a little more upgraded because of the mattress and the new dresser 
but there's a lot that I still want to get done to this room. First, I want to get doors put on. You guys know we have been struggling to get a door put on this bedroom. And a lot of that has just been figuring out exactly what we want to do. Do we want to kind of like frame it in and make it be like more of a traditional French door? Do we want to do sliding doors? I don't know. I really want to keep the bright light that comes into this room extending into the hallway just because the entryway can be a little bit darker, especially with our dark floors. So that's something that we're just kind of always playing around with thoughts in our mind. But I know that this is going to be the year that we get it done. I'm always welcoming any ideas, but that is definitely something that I want to tackle this year and then I'm also kind of toying with the idea of doing something on the back wall I don't know if that's going to be like beadboard or board and batten or maybe some really pretty box molding I'm not entirely sure but I just think I want to do something to give this room a little bit more personality than it has right now so first things first we needed to strip the bed of all of the bedding and then go ahead and remove our very old and used mattress and we are going to replace it with a lull mattress several months ago i kind of told you guys we were in the market for a new mattress and i looked into a ton of them and lull was definitely one of the most recommended and one that i found really good reviews on we ended up getting the lull Lux hybrid mattress this one is awesome because it actually has coils inside of it and it has six different layers to add comfort to add support i would say it leans more on the firm side but i love that just because i feel like that gives you a lot of good support which especially as you get older i feel like that's so needed and I actually have had some sleepovers in this room ever since getting the new mattress and I love it. I feel like it's so comfy. And another thing that I think is so cool is they actually offer a 365 night trial. So if you order one of their mattresses and you don't end up loving it, you can return it within that 365 days. They have no hassle returns and they offer free shipping. Next, I just went into my laundry room to go ahead and wash up our bedding so that once the mattress had completely expanded, I would be ready with some clean bedding. And then this right here is the area that we're going to be putting the dresser in. So it's not a super tiny area, but it's also not oversized or anything. So I wanted to find a really specific size dresser and this one came up literally the morning before and it was just perfect. I love that this dresser is very simple, but also I just think it has a really cool vibe and a cool look to it. It doesn't have any drawer pulls or anything so it's all just like very subtle but it does have some cool woodworking on the side and then because the handles are kind of indented I thought that added some interest but as you can see when I show you these up close shots this dresser is not in the best condition the drawers pull out beautifully like that all works great but the look of it on the outside the cosmetic side of it that part is where it needs a little love and that's why I got such a great deal on it which is perfect because I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a guest room dresser sir. So this is the dresser that I found on Facebook Marketplace. I'll have to wipe that up and clean it off. So I'm gonna start cleaning it up and sanding it off, I guess, and then we'll kind of play it by ear. But I just think it's such a pretty dresser, so it definitely is not gonna be worse than how it is now. So originally I was gonna sand the drawers and all the crevices, but I think I'm just gonna sand the body down to raw wood. I'll start with a 60 grit just to get like the finish and all that off and then I'll smooth it out with a 220 grit. And then we're gonna paint the drawer fronts a color. <laughs> and I'm not a thousand percent sure yet what color I want to do, but I'm just gonna pull from my stash because you guys know I have a lot of paint <laughs> in my stash. I'm actually kind of leaning towards like the same color that we used up in Luke and Noah's bathroom, which is that really pretty rosemary color. It's, I believe, by Sherwin-Williams. That I think is going to tie really nicely in the room. It'll bring that color downstairs. It'll coordinate really well with the evergreen fog that we have. It'll kind of bring a lot of depth into the room. So I think that's our plan, but we'll kind of 
play it by ear. I'm also going to number the drawers just in case they're specific to like what order they go in. And that way I just don't mess it up. Almost immediately when I started sanding this, I don't know exactly what it was, but it was something like the way it started sanding that it really actually scared me. It made me feel like, oh my gosh, this is actually particle board, which I checked on the inside and like you can tell it's wood, but I was second guessing myself. So that's why I was randomly sanding all over the dresser in different spots, just kind of checking it all out. But thankfully I was not originally wrong and it is full hardwood all the way around the dresser. So it did take me literally two or two and a half hours to sand all of this including the sides which I actually haven't sanded yet. I'll get to that in just a minute but sanding is like one of those things that I always think I like but if I have a big project like this after the first 30 minutes I'm like okay I'm done. I think I've sanded enough and then I always start second guessing my decision like did I really like the raw wood look? Should I have just painted this? But I usually will just stick with my original thought on it and I usually always will be happy with my decision to go ahead and sand everything just because I really do love the look of raw wood. Now you'll see how it actually turns out in the end and kind of what I think about it. But I do think the raw wood is so cool, especially because as you saw in the beginning, it was just that really orangey kind of outdated wood. And so this definitely brought it up to more modern day and kind of what's more in style nowadays. And I love how when you sand something, it's something that really doesn't take a lot of money. Literally Literally, you just need a sander and sandpaper and then you're just good to go. You can go to town and really change up the entire look of the piece. So once I got the full base coat sanded, it looks really, really good. But if you run your hands over it, you can feel how rough and unfinished that is. So then I just went over all of the surfaces with the 220 grit sandpaper. When you run your hand over it after you've sanded it with the 220 grit, it's going to feel so buttery soft. And that's how you know you're ready to kind of do whatever else you want to do with it. So at this point, you could leave it raw wood, you could stain it. I'm definitely going to put a poly coat on it just to help protect the wood itself but you can just see how beautiful this is looking also i just have to say i love how quick and painless this looks it wasn't a hard thing to do but it's just tiring after you've been sanding for like two hours if you want to do a project like this you absolutely are capable of doing it but just know it's never going to look quite as easy as it does here on youtube because i can speed up the footage and make it really motivating and quick when in reality it did take me several hours to achieve this look. Alright, so it is a new day. I'm going to focus on getting everything else done today, but we have a busy day. So I'm going to try to kind of like stay on track and just not take a ton of time. The color I'm going to use, it's called Sherwin Williams Rosemary. It's actually the same color that we used in Luke and Noah's bathroom. That's what we're gonna do, but I am gonna be doing it inside today because it is too cold outside. It's like 41 or something. Here in Arizona, that is pretty chilly. So the can says it needs to be put on between 50 and 90 degrees. So we're pretty close, but I'm just gonna play it safe and we will paint inside. But I'm probably still gonna do the poly coat on the raw wood part of the dresser outside. I'll probably take our chances with that one, but I'm gonna go ahead and start bringing things in, getting ready and painting.
This color is kind of interesting. It looks pretty light when you put it on and then it darkens as it goes. But I also feel like when it's in a bright space, it almost changes like the hue of it. And I kind of forgot, but I was a little unsure of it whenever we painted the boys bathroom. And then once it was complete and it dried really good, I love the color. I think it's so pretty. And this one actually is on the same paint swatch as the color that we have on our kitchen island. It's also the same one that we have on our built-ins in our living room and the accent wall in both Kyle's and my office. So I love that since it is kind of in that same area, it's going to have a lot of the same undertones and just feel complimentary while not feeling like just a straight up repeat. So that was one of the reasons that I chose this color. And also obviously that I just had it on hand and I I didn't have to go buy anything special for this simple little project. You and me are moving. Make sure we get through this. Let's just keep on dancing as one. All right, I have, I believe, three coats of paint on these. I honestly think I only needed two because it had really good coverage, but I just wanna make sure it's extra durable, so I went ahead and popped a third coat on there. I have my sweatshirt on now because we're gonna head outside while these finish drying. I'm gonna be really careful because I am freezing, but this is like one of my favorite sweatshirts. I don't wanna ruin it, but it's too cold for me outside, so let's go ahead and get the poly on. Whenever you use poly, just know that there are multiple kinds. I grew up always using the oil-based poly. I don't know if water-based poly is more of a newer thing, but the oil-based poly, I will say, is a little bit more durable. However, it tends to yellow over time. And if you've ever seen a piece of, you know, old furniture or something that was refinished and you see like that yellow gloop or yellow kind of tone on it, I bet you that is going to be an oil-based poly item. And another thing about oil-based is it is a little bit trickier to work with. I feel like it's a little bit less forgiving. So I will always opt for the water-based because it's going to dry fully clear and it's not going to yellow over time, which is the best. just have to wipe this down with a wet rag just to get anything off. Once I did the poly coat, I just went through really quick with a 220 gray sandpaper and just did a light, very light sanding on the top or on the whole surface. And basically that's just gonna give you like that perfectly smooth finish because sometimes you can have just like a slight texture after adding a poly coat. So now it's super smooth and it's looking really, really, really pretty. you guys will have to give me your honest opinion about this. I was feeling pretty confident about it and then once I put it all together I was just like I'm not really sure about it. Kyle said he loves it. The boys say they love it and I feel like I like the elements of it but when I put it together and I put it in this room I'm just not really sure about it. I think the biggest thing that's throwing me off is it does actually look like it has a little bit of a yellow tone especially compared to like the blonde wood of the bed frame and so I'm thinking that I actually might want to go back in and whitewash the base and maybe that will shift it but I don't know you guys let me know your thoughts on it Yeah. 
I totally didn't film this part, but as soon as I got this room all set up, I literally just collapsed onto the bed and it felt so good. It's like the perfect mix of being a firm bed that gives you a lot of support, but it also doesn't feel hard. Like it feels very soft, if that makes sense. I'm really excited. I actually have one of my best, best friends from kindergarten coming to stay with us this coming week. And I cannot wait for her to be able to sleep in this bed and enjoy it. I'm just really excited. And I hope that this room will be a little bit more functional and a little bit more enjoyable to stay in now that we've made these few little changes. Also, I just wanted to get your opinion on this. So I thought that I had a different color paint. I thought I had kind of like a dusty terracotta type of color. And I actually had thought originally that that would be really nice in this dresser as the front drawers, but I didn't end up having it in my stash or at least I couldn't find it. So let me know what you think. Do you like the green color or do you think that like a terracotta color would look even better in this room? I don't know. I'm a little torn on it. So I would love to hear your thoughts. Welcome to our backyard where we live back here and <laughs> cleaning is not an immediate thought when we come back here. Like we just kind of hang out a lot more than anything. And as you can see, there is a lot of work that needs done back here. Like there are different things kind of left across the yard. We even have random stuff in the rocks in the side of the yard. Some things were ours and some things, honestly, I don't really even know how they got there. I don't know if like the wind picked them up and they landed in our yard, but we are gonna take care of all of it. So first I went through and just kind of tidied up the yard area. And then I went ahead and focused on Kind of more of the patio side of things and once i was done it just felt so much more peaceful back here because for a while it's felt like <laughs> a bit of an eyesore and also just a place that you don't as much want to hang out because you can just see all the work that needs to be done So working on the patio, I kind of started in layers. My first layer was literally just tidying things up. So I took everything off the surfaces that didn't belong there. I threw away any garbage or trash, and I even had to get rid of my little plant that did not survive the hot, hot summer here. I think we had like a record high summer. I don't know how it was for everyone else. I think a lot of people had colder summers than normal and half of us had a lot hotter and we were in the hotter half so it literally didn't monsoon the entire summer which is so abnormal for here we usually have like a whole monsoon season and then the temperatures were just so insanely hot so I think that's what kind of did my plant in I also needed to take care of some of our dog beds that one of our cats has had an issue with peeing on I know it's disgusting but that's real life so I'm going to take them out front and later on I just went through and actually tried to power wash them and clean them up that way and then the last thing that I wanted to do in my tidying up layer was to move our griddle over from this area that it literally never gets used to behind our grill where it actually belongs and hopefully we can get some use out of it here. All right, it's actually been a few hours because I had to run out really quick and run some errands but I'm back, I'm gonna go ahead and not pressure wash right here just because that's gonna be like a whole big thing and I'll grab Kyle's help to like move all the furniture off. We'll do that probably a little bit deeper into spring. I am going to use the leaf blower just to blow off like any leaves, dirt, whatever, kind of out into the grass area. And then we are going to <laughs> wipe this down. It is so crazy like how dusty stuff gets not only outside like obviously but even on the inside of the house i feel like it's just so dusty and ridiculous here but we're gonna get this spruced up and looking so much better but already it just looks like way nicer because it was kind of getting rough
life's just a million different types of maybe Oh my god, man, I think sometimes I'm going crazy Okay, so this was my first time leaf blowing our yard and just kind of blowing all the leaves away, but honestly, I wish I had this as a kid because I remember spending so much time raking up all the leaves, and I know we don't have the same amount of leaves or anything here in Arizona, but this was like worlds faster than it was just having to hand rake everything, so... I'm definitely feeling like I missed out on this amazing invention when I was younger. But anyway, once I got the yard kind of tidied up and leaf blown, I actually went back into the patio area and started wiping off the surfaces. And one thing I've noticed, especially when cleaning off really dusty areas like this, especially when you're outside and everything is literally just covered in dust and dirt and all the things, is to use a two rag system. So I'm just spraying everything down with my multi-surface spray and then I'm wiping everything off. And then I go back in with a second rag and I do the exact same thing. And the reason that I've learned that this helps is because the first time you wipe it down with a rag, it looks really good until it dries like minutes later. And then you just kind of have like a bunch of dust and dirt smears around all of your surfaces. And so doing this ensures that it's going to dry really nice and actually look clean once you're done. So the next time you clean up the outside area of your home, especially if it's dusty and dirty like this was, try out the two rag system. It really works amazing. Got a way of keeping me up most nights It's always worth the sleep I sacrifice And love is too precious to trade for rested eyes And you look beautiful in the morning light yeah. hey. I don't know how you feel the air in your lungs you could talk your way around the big old sun But I keep hoping that the end won't come, honey I could listen to you all day long You guys, look at that before and after. I literally didn't bring anything extra into this space, but this just goes to show, put some love back into your space, give it a little bit of time and TLC, you can really enhance your home. You can make it feel so much more inviting, so much more cozy, and just a place that you really want to spend your time, which is exactly how our home should feel. I hope that you are leaving this video today feeling motivated and inspired to do the same kind of things in your home. And if you are wanting some extra company because you're still working on some things or you need a little bit more inspiration, I'm going to link one of my homemaking videos right here. This video is so good. I'm sharing several new recipes, some ideas for decorating your home with things that you already have, and also, of course, some cleaning motivation. So definitely check that one out next, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am going to be sharing my nighttime cleaning routine with you guys tonight. But to start things out, I actually wanted to share something that someone from my church shared with me this last week. And I feel like it was just a light bulb moment where something just clicked. And I think this is going to help me in so many ways. So I wanted to make sure to share it with you guys as well. So what they said is oftentimes we look at things like we did or we didn't do something. Either we did perfect and we didn't get any takeout this week 
or we didn't do perfect and we did get takeout, or I did do my nighttime cleaning routine every single night this week, or I didn't do my nighttime cleaning routine every single night this week. And I feel like it's kind of like an all or nothing mentality, which that's something that I personally have struggled with forever. I am definitely that kind of personality, like all or nothing. I really struggle with doing things in moderation. And so when I do something, I will give it my all. But then if I hit a big hiccup, I end up being really hard on myself and feeling like a complete failure on it as opposed to just kind of focusing on the progress. So anyway, that was kind of the point of what they were saying is instead of just looking at everything as you did or didn't do something or you were successful or you failed, instead put some focus on the progress that you're making. So for example, if you are struggling to not get takeout and you have a week where you get takeout a few times still, but you also eat at home a few times, then that should be viewed as a success because you are doing better than you did before and on the journey in the big scheme of things like you are making progress and that will actually kind of tie into my nighttime cleaning routine because some nights I do a lot of extra stuff and other nights I don't get any of this done and then I would say most nights I'm getting kind of a majority of this done but really it is all about the journey and giving a focus to the progress that you're making and not viewing everything as so black and white and so pass or fail so I hope that that can kind of resonate with you as much as it did with me this week I feel like it's just going to be so much better for my mindset and just keep me in a more positive mind space a lot more often So the first thing that I've started doing in my nighttime cleaning routine is actually just to very quickly tidy up my bathroom. Now typically I only do a topical surface tidy and just kind of clear off the countertops. I usually do not mess with wiping everything down, cleaning the mirror or anything. However, on this night, I have had some tape up on my mirror for the last few weeks, just kind of figuring out what kind of new mirror I want to put into this bathroom. Finally, I decided to go ahead and take that tape down. And when I did, there was a little mark on the mirror. So I decided to go ahead and remove that. And when I did, it was a little bit trickier than I thought. And I ended up having to grab a sponge and some soap. And then it turned into one of those, if you give a mess a cookie moments where I already had my cloths out and I was already already cleaning that mirror so I went ahead and cleaned the other mirror and then since I had all my cloths out I continued to clean the shower door and then I continued to wipe down the counters but just know that on a typical night I am not doing any of this like more deep cleaning it truly is more of like a topical clean 99% of the time. Next, I move into my bedroom, and at this point, there really isn't usually a whole lot to do in here because I have actually started doing a little bit to my bedroom in my morning routine, which let me know if you guys would like to see a morning cleaning routine because I can definitely share that as well. But I feel like I've been really perfecting my routines lately and they have made such a difference in my days. But because I do include my bedroom in my morning routine, I just kind of like to do a light tidy in the evening and just pick up any clothes 
clutter or any mess on the floor. And that way I'm just able to go to sleep with a clean bedroom and also wake up to a clean room, which feels incredible. Let me know if it bothers you to go to sleep in a messy bedroom or if it's not a big deal to you. I know some people are very intense, like they have to have a clean room to go to sleep and then others, it doesn't bother them at all. The next thing that I just started doing a few weeks ago is prepping out a load of laundry for the next morning. So we don't typically run our washing machine at night just because it kind of bothers Kyle when he's trying to go to sleep. It doesn't bother me because I feel like it's just white noise, but what I do is just stick the dirty clothes into the washing machine and then fill it up with all the detergent and everything. And then in the morning, all you have to do is turn the washing machine on and press go. And it's just one of those like no brainer things in the morning that doesn't really add to your morning but it gets your morning off to a really productive start. And then to go along with that, I also like to put away one load of laundry that we did during the day, and that has been really helping me keep up with loads of laundry. So on this night, I did not do this, but a lot of times I will pop on like a YouTube video or put on a show or something to watch while I do this load of laundry, and that has just been kind of keeping me company. But for me, it's been really nice to fold laundry and put it away in the evening like this, just because I feel like in the evening, things kind of slow down and it's just more of a relaxed time and I just feel like this is kind of the moments that I'm able to actually fold laundry and not feel like I'm having to rush through the process or anything. I can kind of enjoy it a little bit more, which I don't necessarily know that I enjoy doing laundry, but it hasn't been bothering me so much when I do it in the evening like this. My nighttime routine is mostly the same however the timing of it kind of varies and also sometimes Kyle will help me out with the nighttime routine sometimes he will take on a little more of it if I'm really busy or nights like tonight I end up doing a lot of it myself but on this night I worked on my bedroom a little bit while the kids were playing a game with Kyle in the living room and then we took a break to hang out together as a family for a little bit got the kids to bed and then I jumped back into my nighttime cleaning routine and got the kitchen and living room done so you'll see that in just a minute some nights i'll do all of this before the kids go to bed and i would say more often than not i do a majority of this routine after the boys go to sleep but it really just depends on like how the night is going Now that the boys were going to sleep, I went ahead into the living room to just tidy everything up. And like I said, a lot of times Kyle will actually help me, especially with this part. We tend to do this part together on a lot of nights. However, on this specific night, he was doing a lot of computer work, so he was just busy with that. So I just ended up taking care of this on my own tonight. But I usually will start out just doing a very, very topical tidy in the living room, just kind of moving any furniture that may have gotten moved throughout the day, picking up any messes, putting away the throw blankets and resetting up the throw pillows and just almost giving the living room like a little reset. However, during my nighttime routine, I typically won't worry about the floors. I won't worry about wiping down the table or anything like that. It's just a topical tidy.
All right, now the kitchen is another story. The kitchen is really where I spend a bulk of my time. This is the space that I do a full clean, not to the floors or anything, and I'm not, you know, deep cleaning any appliances or anything like that, but I make sure that I get everything off the counter. I reset the table, which sometimes becomes our little catch-all. And then I make sure to load up the dishwasher and hand wash any dirty dishes and then give the counters a good wipe down. I always feel like the kitchen is the heart of the home and that's kind of where we all congregate. Like we all come to the kitchen first thing in the morning. We go there after school. We spend our evenings in the kitchen together. So I really like the first place that we go to in the morning as a family to be really nice and clean. And I just feel like it really sets me up for a productive day. Now I have definitely struggled with maintaining my routines over the last couple of years. I've had kind of some ups and downs over the last few years. And so my routines have definitely reflected that. However, I have pretty much maintained a nighttime routine throughout this entire time. Now, sometimes it definitely looks a little bit different, but I feel like how I've done my kitchen at night, that has maintained for years and years and years, and not really a whole lot has changed about that. I feel like I wake up with a ton of stuff to get done every day anyway, but when I wake up to a dirty kitchen, I feel like I'm immediately behind the power curve and I just have to spend the first 30 minutes or so playing catch up from the day before. So I like to do this for my future self and it always helps me out the next day. So typically we do not have a full dishwasher at the end of the day, but we ended up having to run the dishwasher an extra time during this day. It doesn't usually happen like this, but it did on this day. So for that reason, I was having to unload the dishwasher in the evening and then restart only a partial load. But typically how it happens is we kind of load our dishwasher up a little bit throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, I will finish loading up the dishwasher, actually run it at night and then in the morning it's usually Liam and Noah's job to empty the dishwasher and Luke takes out the kitchen trash and that is just kind of one of their morning chores that they do. This is feeling we're all so much more than we see They can box us up in walls But that don't change anything There's a sun on the rise Painting all the sky blue Where the morning meets the night And every color breaks through We learn how to fly through the fall Learn how to fight through it all We can see the world getting smaller As we rise up Learn how to give what we take Learn how to bend but not break To give it all and not play it safe Every day like it'll be our last alive We're the way back to the stars We are the dreamers, we are the dreamers We're the fire that lights up the dark Millions of faces, every place one beating heart You guys, I love having a nighttime routine. I personally feel like it is the most important cleaning routine that you can have because it is going to set up your day for success every single time that you do it. And it really doesn't have to be super difficult. It really just needs to be what benefits you the most. Like don't go crazy so that you're so super tired the next day. But if you can do those little things so that you're not starting behind the curve in the morning, you are going to thank yourself later. And it's amazing how much more productive you can be in the morning when you don't have to do all those little tiny things because you spent, you know, maybe 10 or 20 minutes doing it the night before. 
This routine typically only takes me like maybe 20 minutes or so to do. And like I said, it's because I'm not doing anything really in depth. I'm just kind of doing a general tidy. And then in the morning, I'm able to work on like my weekly cleaning routine where I focus on a little bit more of that deep cleaning of different areas in my home. But let me know in the comments, do you have a nighttime routine? And if you do, what does that consist of for you? And also I'm curious, is it something that you have been very consistent with? Do you do that most nights? Or is it more like, that's my ideal nighttime routine, but I'm still working on it. I would just kind of love to know where you guys are at with it and what it consists of. Finally, at the very end of my nighttime cleaning routine, I just like to use my e-gloss to go ahead and wipe down and clean my counter and stove. And then I go right behind it with my bloom towel to dry and polish everything off and get it looking nice and shiny and really nice and clean for the morning. Behold all the pieces of fortress that once stood. The canvas's colors can't hold like they once could. Listen to the growing sound of all I've known that bids me farewell. I saw the new horizon deep within your eyes as the autumn leaves fell. And I'm in love. Yeah, I'm in love. Oh, you broke. nothing that they hold and what good are hearts if you bury them all alone oh everything i knew is turning into ruins in your shadow and i thought that i'd be ready but falling is instead so this is actually not part of my nighttime cleaning routine. However, this has been my nighttime routine for, I would say the last few weeks. And a lot of it has been kind of the same, but I've just changed it up a little bit. So what I like to do once I'm done with the kitchen and cleaning, and usually Kyle and I will have a little extra time together and we'll watch a show together or do something like that. But once all of that is done, I will come into my bathroom and wash my face. And then I also just recently started showering at night which has been really awesome i feel like it's been a huge time saver and i also have been working on not washing my hair every day because i have been a daily hair washer for years and years and years and i've tried to fix that and adjust it and i've kind of struggled with it but i've asked my sisters a bunch of tips and i've been working really hard to do that and that has been helping me a lot too so nighttime showers and not washing my hair every night has been saving me a lot of time and then once I get out of the shower and into PJs I usually like to pull out my workout clothes for the next morning because I've been starting to do pickleball in the morning it's just been a really fun way to work out and then right before bed I like to sit down and plan out my day in my planner that way I can be really intentional with my time the next day and I'm not having to spend a lot of time in the morning trying to figure out exactly what I'm supposed to be doing that day I just already have it laid out for me and then once I'm done with that I put away my phone for the night I don't pick it up and I actually just read some scriptures which has been really nice Kyle has been spending probably the last year or year and a half reading right before bed and he swears it helps him so much and I've done this with him occasionally but this year I made it a goal to go ahead and start doing that and it has made the biggest difference so definitely reading right before bed has helped me just kind of settle my mind and help me sleep a lot better Thank you. 
and that concludes my nighttime cleaning routine as well as a little sneak peek into my personal nighttime routine but i hope you guys got a lot of motivation from today's video and i also hope it felt relaxing to you to just hang out with me for a little while and if you are still in need of more motivation i'm gonna link my after dark cleaning playlist right here this has been a request from several of you to create a playlist like this because you guys love how relaxing and peaceful these videos are so now whenever you're needing a little calmness in your life you can turn this on and just hang out with me for a while thank you so much for being here and i'll see you in the next one bye guys Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are working on some house projects, mostly here in my bathroom. Now it's kind of a long story, but we ended up with some extra light fixtures whenever we renovated our boys' bathrooms upstairs. Just like by the time it all worked out, we were too late past the return window, so we weren't able to return things. So we are gonna put those to use and change out the light fixtures in Kyle's in my bathroom and that's gonna honestly just be nice because it'll just kind of elevate the space a little bit it'll help us transition our bathroom because there are a few things that we want to do that we're not going to do today but I'm still kind of working on the details and it's also just going to make all the bathrooms look and feel more uniform because at this point this is the last bathroom that we really haven't done a whole lot to other than painting the vanity and actually changing out the countertops whenever we did our kitchen renovation so we're going to work on that I also want to add a little bit of storage in our toilet area because we don't have an actual linen closet in our bathroom. So that's gonna add a lot of function. And then the final thing that I want to get done today is paint some furniture and actually flipping a Facebook marketplace find to kind of elevate it and bring it into our own style. I've been loving to flip furniture from Facebook marketplace because one, furniture is so expensive. And so finding stuff used is just a lot more practical. And also you can like really customize it. So we do have a lot to get done. Let's Let's do it. Guess you need some time and space. I'll give you some time and space. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell me if something's changed. Just don't leave it this way. Give me something to take. Give me something to take. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cause babe, I'm cool either way. So Kyla's heading outside to turn off the breakers. So these lights should turn off in a minute. But the story about how we got these extra lights, so, oh, there they go, they're off. So the story of how we got these extra lights is, I think it was in Luke and Noah's bathroom, which was our Pepto-Bismol pink bathroom previously. Now we've done a full renovation. It's like not even the same bathroom at all. So I'll actually link that video up here in the iCards. But basically, Kyle was saying we should just do the one single light across because it would just be a lot easier to not have to do two lights. So that's what we bought that light for. I'm telling the story of how we ended up with these like, extra lights. Then last minute, he was like, you know what? We can actually just split them into two lights. Got the first light, we couldn't return it. So we were like, all right, well, we'll use that for something else. And I ordered the two separate lights that are like mine, where it's just three lights on each thing. I know I'm butchering this story. <laughs> yeah, great story. <laughs> Like he takes down the original light and he goes to check that we can put it in and we realize that was our AC unit pipes going up there. Yeah, the line sets for our air conditioners. Yeah, the line sets for our air conditioners is right there. So there is absolutely no way that we could put two separate lights, like one above each sink. And so now we're stuck with this like long light and the two smaller lights. And then we tried to put up that small light and that was like way too small for that area. So we ended up just having to get a different, bigger, like longer one. And so that's the story of how we had all these extra lights, but it ended up working out because I have two lights on here and Kyle has the one with four lights or four, four bulbs. Oh, we have are, all these These extra are sealed lights. all around. I forgot about that. Yeah. What a pain. Everything in, in our house is sealed, like our outlet covers, our light switches, our lights, because of scorpions, because we live in Arizona. So Kyle's gonna have to cut that out and then we'll start putting them up or he'll start putting them up. All 
All right, so we are just getting started taking down the lights and everything. I am so grateful that Kyle knows how to do all this. A lot of it was self-taught and a lot of it he kind of learned as he was growing up and definitely a lot of trial and error as we've owned our homes and just done our own renovations a lot of times. I feel like a lot of that has come from either not being able to afford to hire out or when we do get quotes to hire things out, I feel like they're just pretty astronomical a lot of times, or at least in our opinion. And so we end up just kind of opting to learn how to do it and do it ourselves. But it's been really cool because over the years, we really didn't know how to do everything and we still absolutely don't know how to do everything but we know how to do so much more than we did 10 years ago or even three years ago like we're just constantly kind of trying new things and learning how to do different things and just expanding our wheelhouse of things we do know how to do now so that has been really a cool thing just to see over the years let me know if you tend to go for like diys and doing things yourself or do you just end up having someone else help you out with it yeah, gonna start putting up the next two lights because we have the one and I actually I love the look but it's just making the mirror <laughs> it's kind of like pointing out that the mirror needs to be adjusted because I want to actually take down the full length like builder grade mirror and put something else up <sighs> I, I'm kind of struggling with figuring it out just because Kyle has the one sink so you could put any mirror there you could put like a square rectangle circle like round whatever but on here, because there's two lights, and then because I have the sink over here, and then the little vanity area over here, I feel like you need two mirrors. I don't know. And so I just am trying to figure out, like, maybe that would look fine. Maybe I could do round mirrors. I don't know. Any thoughts you have? I know I've asked you guys before, but I'm just always playing with different ideas. Anyway. While he's doing that, I'm going to start painting this little bench down here. I'm going to use my amazing beyond paint you guys know i love this stuff so much we have used beyond paint where all we used it uh so we did these vanities we did the actually loft. all the bathroom vanities actually the all the bathroom, bathroom vanities. Room, upstairs the theater this room one. bathroom mm -hmm. and then the loft and then so the loft like built-in desk area we did that i thought there was one more oh my desk oh your desk yep we did it on my desk and then, oh, we painted black on like our bar stools oh, bar and stools. our kitchen chairs yeah. from Facebook Marketplace. We've used that stuff a ton. Yeah. And I even did the cabinets up in Montana at like an apartment up there to turn it into an Airbnb. And so we did it up there on that bathroom and kitchen. So like we've just used this stuff all over and it's amazing because you don't have to sand, you don't have to prime, you don't have to anything crazy you don't even have to do a top coat if you don't want and it just has like a really nice professional texture and you can really get away with like two coats sometimes i do recommend three coats typically that's what we're going to use today and i'm going to paint my stool black so that it kind of matches the hardware and doesn't look kind of out of place this is the roller i'm using it's not the right <laughs> roller brush but i can't find my little bitty roller handle so this will work
So if you are using Beyond Paint, one thing that they say to do is basically roll as much as possible. That's going to give you the best texture. But of course, in those crevices, you wanna start with that first and you never want to actually brush the paint on with a regular brush. Instead, you want to press your paintbrush into the paint and then press your paintbrush into the corners and crevices and kind of do like a stippling motion. It will dry a little bit different than how it is put on but that's gonna give it a really nice texture. And I feel like it also makes it a little bit more durable just because it's not completely flat. So it does look really good and it's just like so incredibly easy to do. I just cannot say enough good stuff about Beyond Paint, especially if you are a beginner DIYer and you're doing furniture or you're trying to, you know, freshen up your bathroom or your kitchen or whatever, you need to try out Beyond Paint. The only downside that I've found is that they actually just come in like certain colors and they're pre-mixed and everything, which is great in the way that it makes it kind of simple and not super overwhelming, but it's not great in the way that you can't really customize your colors exactly what you want. You just have to find the best match for what you're looking for on their website. Now, I will typically get Beyond Paint from Amazon, but I know you can find them from different retailers online, but I will link it down below in case you wanna check them out. And this color that I'm using today is the black color called Licorice, and it's just a really, really pretty matte black color. I've used this on a few furniture pieces so far and they've come out great. Kyle was mostly doing the lights on his own. We were just kind of trying to divide and conquer and just kind of make the most of our time. But once he got over to this area, he just needed my help kind of holding it up. But he does say that it really is so easy to change out light fixtures. You can just YouTube some videos on like specifics how to change out a light fixture and it just explains things so well. And he's also said once you've done it once or twice, it really is just not as confusing or as such a big project as it might seem. So if you do have outdated light fixtures in your home or ones that you just don't care for, this is going to be such an easy and really pretty affordable project that you can do around your house to kind of elevate your space that doesn't take a lot of time and doesn't take a lot of budget. All right, the stool is about dry enough to do a second coat, but I wanted to show you guys. So our house is so not symmetrical. There are so many things that are just like off and it seems intentional, I don't know. So you can see this light is directly over the sink. They are actually kind of centered between the window and the wall, but then this light is not even like close to centered on the vanity. So if I were to put a vanity light or a van like a mirror over the vanity and a mirror over the sink, I feel like it would look really off, but I'll turn you around and show you. Okay, so I'm lined up like straight with the vanity right here and look, it's just like, here kind of and the center should be like that so I feel like that means I have to do a solid mirror all the way across I don't know if you guys have any other ideas definitely let me know I'm gonna go ahead and get the second coat of paint on this and then we actually have to run out and grab some supplies because in the bathroom we are going to add a shelf just above where the door opens so that it won't hit it and that way we can store toilet paper and things like that. It'll just be way nicer and a lot more function in here. But one thing you can do, even if you don't have the little cove like this, is you can put it literally right above your door. Just put a shelf right here. It won't be affected by your door that way. And you're also, it's gonna be so high up that you really won't notice it, but you can store towels up there. You can store toilet paper, like kind of whatever you want and it's just like an out of the way spot. So anytime you have a door, especially, you know, somewhere like a bathroom or something, that's always a really great way to add a lot of storage in places that normally just would be kind of forgotten. So this is how the first layer of Beyond Paint ends up looking. You can see it's very splotchy in the beginning, so definitely don't base your opinion on it on that first layer. But the first layer almost acts as like a primer and it just gives the rest of the coat something to really adhere well to. But that second coat is going to go on so much better and it just has so much more coverage. And then they say you can stop at two coats depending on how it's looking. I personally almost always will go for that third coat just because even though sometimes it feels not fully necessary, I just think it gives you that extra layer of durability, which especially in a house full of kids and animals and life happening all around, 
around. I just feel like that extra few minutes it takes to give the third coat is so incredibly worth it. I don't know how many times I've done this to our furniture, but it's so incredibly impressive and amazing to see what a difference paint can make. If you have a furniture piece that still works really well, or if you find something at a garage sale or something on Facebook Marketplace, but you don't fully love it, but you like the bones of it, give it a quick paint job. You can use Beyond Paint. You can use a lot of different paint techniques actually, and you can also even just spray paint it and it will completely change the look and the feel of the piece. So when we went to Home Depot, we did not get a lot of stuff, but we did need to get light bulbs because that's something we always forget. I don't know what it is. Maybe one day we'll remember to get those earlier on, but until now, we'll just get them the day that we put things up and then we'll get the satisfaction of actually turning on the new light fixture and seeing how it looks all lit up. But the other thing that we went to Home Depot for was the shelving that we wanted to put in the little bathroom powder area. So we actually went to the closet section of Home Depot because those boards are going to be finished. So they're going to be really nice and uniform. They're also going to be a lot cheaper, which is kind of weird, but I feel like they ended up being a lot cheaper than some of the lumber that you can find. So we just ended up getting a little closet shelf that was about 10 inches deep. And then we just had some extra little scrap pieces that Kyle's going to set on the sides of the boards. And that's going to be the braces that will actually hold up the shelf. So we got all our measurements taken and then we went outside and Kyle just used his saw to cut things down to the size that we needed. Like I mentioned earlier, this is such a simple DIY. And even if you don't have a separate toilet room area where you do have the three walls kind of close together like we have here, you can actually do this same thing just right above your door frame. And I feel like that works super well in pretty much any bathroom just because your eyes don't go up above the door often. And if it does, it's just added storage, which is awesome. But instead of doing those pieces of wood as the braces to hold up the shelf, I would actually suggest just putting some nice L brackets. You could even do like a floating shelf L bracket right outside of the door frame, and it will give you so much more storage. You can store toilet paper. You could even store towels, depending how deep you made that shelf. But anytime you're able to use vertical area for storage, I feel like it's such a win because typically that area is so unusable and just kind of left there to be wasted. So if you need extra space or extra storage, definitely don't look past this project idea. It can make a huge difference in how functional your space feels. All right, now that the stool is all painted, you'll have to let me know what you guys think. I was honestly a little bit sad to be painting over that wood. I actually just think the color of the stool was so beautiful, but it really didn't go with anything in our bathroom. And so it's kind of been one of my side projects that I've been wanting to get done for quite a while. And now that I was able to add the cushion on and kind of put it in place, I think it just fits the space so much better. So I personally love it, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Once Kyle had secured the shelf, he just went in to cover the screw holes and then he went ahead and just caulked around the edges to make it look a lot more finished. And tomorrow I will be painting that shelf just to make it feel a little bit more seamless. While I have the paint out, I'm just going around and like painting little areas that I can remember that have like nicks in them. So I'm being careful, but I keep walking around with my paintbrush just like painting little spots. Me, baby. 
so we are jumping into day two. Kyle went ahead and got the wood putty all sanded, got it all caulked and everything. I'm just waiting for the caulk to dry before I paint it and then I'm just actually gonna paint it the same color as our walls in here, which is Benjamin Moore Pale Oak. It's pretty much the color that we have throughout a majority of our house, but while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm actually gonna step into our closet and we are going to work on this little table. I know it doesn't look like a lot, but this table I actually got from Facebook Marketplace because I thought it was a lot smaller, like I thought it was a little small side table, but it's a lot bigger. It's almost more like a, not an entryway table, but it's kind of like that height, I guess. But the thing is my office, I love my office, but because it is open on the top, we have like some little see-through areas up there. It's not soundproof at all. And so when I do my voiceovers, it's hard because I have to ask everyone to be quiet or I have to stay up late, do it. So lately I've been doing my voiceovers in here, utilizing that old table and utilizing the stool that I had in my office. But I wanna make this table all pretty. So as you can maybe see, like Luke actually had pulled this out and he was starting to flip it a little bit, but he went a little bit too far and I actually didn't realize that this was just a veneer on top. I thought it was like inset and everything. So you can kind of see where it started to go through. I still really love the look of the top. So I'm gonna see if I can fix it at all or like refinish it in a way that doesn't look bad, but we'll kind of play around with it a little bit today. And if worse comes to worse, I can always just paint the entire thing. But I think I'm gonna make it a little bit easy on myself and we're actually just going to use some spray paint because I have a lot of it. So I'm gonna start with like the heirloom white, which is the color that I used to go with on everything. I'm gonna do that as like a base coat. And then I'm going to try smoky beige, just cause I think I like this color a little bit better. I think I'll only need one coat for a top coat and then this will kind of just cover up the dark areas. So let's go ahead and take it outside and we'll kind of see what we can do with it. quick which is one of the reasons I love it but I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around and then I'll explain <laughs> what I'm thinking of doing we'll see if it works I'm not holding my breath for it but I'm like desperately trying to find a way to showcase some of that really pretty raw wood on top I found this bowl at actually just on the side of the road. So I didn't find it anywhere. I just found it on the side of the road. I want to do something with it. I'm not exactly sure. I'm thinking maybe like I'll just paint it, but it's just like such a nice big bowl. As soon as I saw it, I couldn't just let it go. But this is gonna be perfect, maybe, we'll see, to preserve that top. Because it's round, like I can't just tape it off. There's no way I could get really clean lines as a circle. So I'm literally just gonna try to set the bowl here and just like lightly, paint around it and then this part will be painted. This circle will be left, which this circle actually looks really nice as far as like raw wood goes. I'm hoping this will work out, but we'll see. Wish me luck. So really, I just wanna make sure to take my time and like center this and then I don't wanna move this at all. Driving way too fast down this two lane street. Windows down your feet. Yeah, they're hanging on now. The wind has got you. With your 
I'm gonna wait for the final coat of spray paint to be drying out there before we remove the bulbs I want to make sure it's completely dry we'll see if I'm brilliant or just silly but now we're just gonna take that paint color and paint the shelf that way it'll just kind of blend in because this isn't a shelf that I want really obvious I just want the function of it so we're gonna paint it the same color as the walls and then we'll go check the table All right, another coat is done on the shelf in there. Let's go see how the table is turning out. Before I reveal it to you, comment below. Let me know, do you think this is gonna work or do you think it's not? I don't really know what I think about it. I think I don't like it. <laughs> I think it's like kind of cool and kind of like weird. I don't know. I think if I had a larger bowl and I was able to do a lot smaller rim around it and keep a lot more of the surface area of the raw wood, I think it could be really cool. That was the biggest bowl I had. And also I had to cover up parts that got too sanded. I think I'm gonna repaint the whole top. It's not gonna be a huge deal, it won't take long, but I'm like kind of bummed to lose that inside piece, but I really do love this color. It's such a pretty color and I think it'll be good. So let's finish painting. <laughs> ah. Okay, I'm changing the plans. I was just gonna come paint it, but I called Kyle down to come see what he thought of it. And he said he thinks it's cool. So I'm gonna let you guys, <laughs> let me know your thoughts in the comments. It's so easy to go ahead and paint over the top, but I'll live with it for maybe like a few days, see what I think, and then hear your thoughts. And then I'll leave it or I'll paint it in the coming days. So let me know what you guys think and be honest. Oh my gosh, I feel like we got a lot done today. These were a lot of like little projects that we were just wanting to get done, but kind of never set aside time to finish them. And now that they're done, I feel like they actually made a bigger difference than I was kind of anticipating, but I love it. And I have something fun to share. I actually found some mirrors that I think are going to be perfect for this space. So I found them on a sale and I ordered them. And still, if you guys have any ideas, of course, send them my way, but hopefully they will arrive in one piece and I'll be able to 
to share that pretty soon. But another exciting thing is tomorrow, Kyle and I are actually going to be working on our master bedroom makeover. This is definitely going to be like a multi-video thing just because there's a lot that I want to get done in that room. Give your final tips, final advice, final thoughts on our master bedroom because that whole process is officially beginning the day you're watching this. And I'm hoping to share some sneak peeks and kind of ask your opinion in real time over on Instagram. So if you're not already following me over there, go ahead and do that as well. But thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed coming along as we did these random house projects in our bathroom. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.